My name is Natalie Prez, and I have an interview with one of the members of Candle Mass on May 16th, 2012. Uh, let's see. How would you describe the overall sound of this new album, and how does it compare to your last release? Oh, um, that's a very difficult question, actually, because I'm, I'm so I'm so involved, so I um, I don't know how how it is different. I, I think the, the previous album was maybe a little bit more metal than than this one, and uh, but this one is also more metal in a way. Uh, you know, partly and uh, more epic, mm -hmm. you know, here and there, and uh, got more atmosphere here and there. And um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, somebody said it's more of everything this time, so maybe it is. Um, if people uh, expect it to be a, a, a full out metal album, it ain't um, because it's, it's very varied. Mm -hmm. We have very varied songs on the album, uh, fast, faster ones, up-tempo, slow songs, and, uh, you know, melodic tracks like uh, Dancing in the Temple, <laughs> for example. So um, I think you, you get a little bit of everything, but uh, still a bunch of nine pretty, pretty good songs on the album. Yeah, sounds pretty interesting, but a good combo, you know lay things out and try a little bit of everything, like you were saying. <laughs> Makes yeah, it more absolutely. interesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, we, we tr I try to make it really interesting with, mm -hmm. you know, uh, having a l little bit more, uh, having more keyboards uh, on this album mm -hmm. uh, this time. But, uh, you know, to make it, you know, uh, wisely, uh, instead of having keyboards all over the place, we add a little bit of keyboards, you know, here and there in the songs, and sometimes they are pretty loud, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they are more subtle uh, in the background. Um, so um, I think it works really, you know, it adds a nice extra dimension to, to tracks like uh, The Lights of Sea, for example. Uh, but also, you know, the, the opening track, Prophet, you, you can hear a little bit of, of, of keyboard in the background, uh, but it's very, very, very subtle. But uh, if you take it away, you will miss it, but you, sometimes you cannot even hear it's there, you know, so. Um, but it's a, good, it's a good production, nice production, and it brings, you know, every, all the elements, it brings all the elements, you know, forward, the guitars, are pretty in your face, the drums are, you know, pretty loud, a great uh, snare sound, great uh, uh, sound of the kick, and, uh, you know, Robert's vocals are pretty high in the mix, and, uh, you know, they, they, sound, they sound incredible. <laughs> cool, can't wait to hear it. <laughs> oh, you haven't heard it? Not yet, I haven't had a chance oh. to yet. <laughs> oh really? Okay, I, th I thought they uh, sent uh, everything out, but maybe n maybe not in the states. Uh, maybe not, you not are a, a week <laughs> after Europe, uh, perhaps. Uh, I didn't know about this. <laughs> no. Okay, but uh, then you, then you will 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 you know long to hear the album. You will look forward to to it. Have some anticipation. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> uh, did the band have any definite goals that you were shooting for before the recording even began for this album? Um, hmm. Difficult question. Um, um, we, um, the thing that we were talking about before the album um, was that we, we all like the previous album very much, uh, Death, Magic, Doom. Mm -hmm. uh, so we thought this Death, Magic, Doom was going to be pretty difficult to match. Mm -hmm. So we were not sure that we would even, you know, make another album or even try to make another album. It, it wasn't, you know, um, a sure thing that we, that we did it. So... We had a big meeting about that, uh, 
uh, last summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and I said, uh, yeah, I would like to try anyway, mm -hmm. you know, to write some songs and see what we can come up with, because it cannot sound like Death Magic to me. It has to be different. And, and you know, um, I didn't know how to make it different, so I just wrote. And uh, so um, the thing I did was, you know, just to not to try to, you know, do the same thing, <laughs> basically. I tried very hard not to repeat, you know, the recipe for uh, Deathmatic Doom. Mm -hmm. uh, so I came up with, with, with some other stuff, some other songs. Um, you know, um, the opening track on Psalms for the Dead is, is called Prophet. Um, and it's a, it's a double bass drum blaster. It, it opens up with, you know, uh, our version of Judas Priest, Exciter, mm -hmm. you know. And, and people don't expect that because we were a doom metal band. And then you get, you know, you know a freight train doing 300 kilometers an hour. And uh, so we don't, we don't have that on Deathmatic Doom, <laughs> for sure. And uh, so, and then I came up with, with a single... Uh, uh, dancing in a temple, and the other guys just loved it because it doesn't sound like anything on Deathmatic Doom. It's just different. Mm -hmm. It's still cannabis, you know. It's got all the, you know, um, uh, would say uh, the signs of cannabis, but it, it's not. It's still not cannabis. It, it sounds like cannabis going rainbow, you know. We're dancing in a temple, um, old rainbow. I mean, in the, from the seventies, not the pop rainbow in the eighties. So it, it's like that, you know, and the, the lights of Thebes sounds pretty oriental, um, and uh, we have Siren Song on the album with super loud keyboards, you know, in the same, in the vein of, uh, you know, John Lord or Ken Hensley from, from uh, Uriah Heep, mm -hmm. and that's not typical Kavanagh, so um, hopefully you will have a pretty interesting listening in a couple of days time hopefully <laughs> yeah yeah <clears throat> um, is this a concept album and what inspired the album title mm, it's not a concept album um, in the in the true vein of, of, of a concept album um, no it's pretty much nine 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 songs um, the task of different themes, mm -hmm. but still, you know, you have like an aura of uh, uh, leaving and farewell and, you know, goodbyes over the album, because it is the last album, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Psalms for the Dead, it, it, the, the track itself is about... Uh, the fact that you ca you cannot take anything with you when you leave, when you go, mm -hmm. and uh, all you have is your your reputation and what people uh, think about yourself and what you did while you stayed. You had had your uh, your time, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it it has some kind of vibe. The album. <laughs> um, I don't know know how to explain it, but I, I can't. I, I don't think I can explain it better than than I just did. So um, <laughs> it's, it's got a certain atmosphere mm -hmm. that, that you need to, to, to hear. And maybe it's the keyboards, the, the organs on, on, on the album that creates that. I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you described it really well for me. <laughs> I could get a pretty good picture of what to expect and, you know, the outcome of it should be. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty metal and it's also pretty heavy, um, but still with a, with a certain uh, big vibe, uh, you know, over the album. And, and uh, I don't know, um, it, it's so fresh for me, this album. Um, I, 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 uh, I, just, I just did it, you know, so I, 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 can't, keep the, I can't keep the distance, uh, you know, I'm not distant from it. So it's it's pretty difficult to me to, to speak about it. Um, if you would interview a, a fan of the band, I'm, I'm pretty sure they could could uh, you know give you a, a much better explanation than I can. 
<laughs> and I fucking wrote the song. I recorded the album and mixed the album <laughs> and everything. <laughs> and I have no fucking clue, you know. <laughs> um, it, it, it's so early. Maybe, maybe we should talk, you know, next year sometimes, you know, in, in one year's time. And I, I could probably give you a much better answer to, to <laughs> your questions. <laughs> uh, but, you know, um, I think the best thing is... is uh, you know, to uh, for for you when you when you get access to the material, you just listen to it, to the album and uh, you know make you make your own opinion mm -hmm. uh, about what what you hear. So, so <laughs> it is it is difficult for me to to explain it. <laughs> uh, mm, I, I I try my best, but you know <laughs> it's it's difficult. It's all right. I think you did a good job. <laughs> Ooh, thanks. <laughs> um, did you guys feel any pressure to do a follow-up and have this be your final album? Um, in in a way, yes. In a way, no. Um, like like um, like I said before, it was. Um, um, difficult to um, uh, make a better album than Deathmatic Doom for us because we, we like it so much. Uh, but still, uh, we, we don't really care what people think, so um, the pressure was just on us and pretty much on me because I, I have to write the songs. And uh, so... But I, I pretty much lifted the pressure off me because uh, I, just, I said to myself, fuck it, you know, I'm, I'm not going to even try to make a bit better album than Death Magic Doom. I, I'm just going to write some songs, you know, uh, try to do, do a good job as a songwriter and, uh, you know, let's rehearse it and, and we'll see what's going to come out. Mm. And uh, I think it worked, you know, by... If, if you were going to go, you know, into the studio with the... Uh, intention of okay we're gonna you know push us even further you know uh, we're gonna you know we're gonna top this album and uh, maybe you, you would just fail you know you will fall flat on your on your ass you know mm -hmm. uh, so by not trying to do it I think uh, that's a good approach you know not I'm not gonna even try um, but but now you know people seem to like the album very much. People are, are very excited about the album in Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and this is just a second American interview I do, and the, the previous guy fucking loves the album. So uh, <laughs> we must have done something right. You know? <laughs> um, so so far so good. Um, um, and the, the record company is, uh, is also pretty excited because they hear so much that uh, we will be uh, uh, album of the month uh, here and there and over there and uh, maybe yeah there too. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think we, we we're in a pretty good position right now because uh, it will be the last album for Canvas and uh, um, I don't think that's a bad thing because we will go out with a blast and uh, you know make you know, a real good album and we will tour for a couple of years or three years or four years or even five years. <laughs> I don't know, but, uh, you know, uh, we, we will not uh, fade off into the sunset and people will just wonder where did they go. <laughs> like some bands do, they just disappear yeah. from the face of the earth and you never hear from them again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we thought it would be good to go the other way and just announce it, that it will be the last album and... Uh, you know, make some farewell tours, and if people know that this is the last album, um, perhaps they will invite us, you know, to territories where we haven't been. Mm -hmm. um, we, we would love to go to Australia or, or Japan, for example. We haven't been there. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, and if people want to see us in, in South America, sure, we go there too, you know, if... Uh, People want to see us play Whiskey A Go Go again, you know, we go there, you know. <laughs> um, so we're going to play everywhere and, you know, say hello and perhaps goodbye to people. Um, I don't know, but I feel pretty good about this because I, I think we're in a good position, you know, that we don't have anything to prove as a band. So that feels pretty good. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know if this makes any sense to you, but <laughs> no, it, it makes the best sense. Way I, I can descri describe it. <laughs> <laughs> that makes perfect sense. It sounds pretty exciting and should keep you busy between now and for as long as you could handle it. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. And uh, you don't have any pressure on you, and uh, you don't have to take the long tours. Uh, um, and you can use shoes, and you can pick, you know, wherever you want to go. And uh, <laughs> if you don't want to go to, um, uh, I don't know, um, on a long European tour, you, you don't do that because we don't need to. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, but if you want to take that gig in uh, Portugal, for example, mm -hmm. uh, it won't give you much money. But hey, we haven't been to Portugal, you know. Let's go. <laughs> uh, we will do that. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, I think a lot of bands, you know, they, they release album after album after album. They are semi-good, and they tour and tour and tour and tour. Um, and I, I'm, and I'm, I'm very happy that Canamass is not in that, that position that we have to do that anymore. Yeah. So we, we can just, you know, kick back, relax, and uh, see what people think mm -hmm. about the album. If, if there's, you know, somewhere that, you know, people... They just don't like the album, you know. We do, we don't sell in France, for example. Mm -hmm. So okay, then we don't play in France. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's uh, it's a um, it's not a big thing. It's it's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. um, but still, you know, um, before you maybe you had to do five five gigs in France, mm -hmm. and you had like thirty people a gig. I don't know. But you we don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, um, I think. You know, it's it's a it's a pretty good thing for Canamass in a way. Maybe it doesn't work for other bands, but we got our own way of doing things anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> for you being a musician and being a part of Candlemass, you know, for so long, I'm actually surprised that you guys have you know been around for quite some time. And you you yourself had said you haven't you guys haven't been to Australia and Japan. It's like, dude, you've been around for like let's say 30 years and you still haven't made it to Japan or Australia or this place or that place. It's like, dude, why you you're, yeah. why are you take it so long? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I, I I talked to I just did a, an interview with the biggest uh, Japanese magazine, Burn, mm -hmm. and they were asking the same thing. Uh, you know, you've been around for nearly thirty years, so, so how come you haven't been to Japan? And so, what can I say? We tried a couple of times. Um, we had. Um, we had a tour with Black Sabbath actually coming up, a European tour, and we were also expected to go to Japan with Black Sabbath. Mm -hmm. I think this was in 89, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we something collided as usual, so we had to do a European tour with, with some other band, that's what I recall. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty close, and uh, I think uh, like 90, 91 or something, we were also on our way to Japan, but for some other reason it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And you just think, okay, yeah, sure, it didn't happen, maybe next year, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and it is like that, so it's no biggie if it doesn't happen, you're so used to it, you have... They they will um, you know uh, our managers and you know the record company they they will put like ten cards on the table for you and you know and you're so used to it that one card or two cards will still be on the table you know after a week mm -hmm. so you're just so used to hearing things that okay we're gonna maybe we'll do that or maybe that will happen or maybe the band will go there and you said okay whatever <laughs> uh, so let's see what what you say next week yeah um, it is like that um, but this time you know we are pretty much in control uh, ourselves uh, and uh, if um, something com comes up you know with with Japan or Australia you know we say sayonara you know we go <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> um, how does it feel to be a part of the Napalm Records family, and why did you decide that this album would be your last album? When did you, as a band, all decide, okay, this is it? <laughs> yeah, um, uh, we had a big meeting uh, last summer, um, and we discussed if... Uh, 
if if we would make a follow up to Death Magic film, uh, it wasn't uh, a um, something that was. Uh, you know, for sure that we mm -hmm. would make another album because we were out of the contract with, with Nuclear Blast anyway. Mm -hmm. So we had no obligations, uh, nothing. Mm -hmm. But we have said to ourselves that, okay, maybe it would be nice to make one last album, uh, mm -hmm. announce that it will be the last one, and, mm -hmm. you know, go on nice tours that we dictate everything ourselves. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, say a final goodbye to to everybody, and um, you know we had uh, we had quite a few offers from uh, from uh, several uh, labels and uh, also from Nuclear Blast who wanted us back. <laughs> um, yeah, sure, absolutely. We had, we had a pretty decent offer from them, uh, but uh, um, Napalm. Uh, won the contest, um, they gave us an offer we, we couldn't refuse, <laughs> and I also think it's, you know, it's a good thing being on, on, on a label like Napalm, because mm -hmm. uh, um, we will be a priority act on Napalm. Yeah. Um, on Nuclear Blast, you still have bigger bands than Canamass, and, uh, you know, uh, the big bands will always be, be the priority to to on on big labels. So mm -hmm. instead of us, uh, you know, being second to bands like Night Nightwish, uh, you know, etc. 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 We are a priority act with Napalm, mm -hmm. so we get the big ads and everything. <laughs> so yeah. so um, you know. I think Nuclear Blast is a really good label. They can really sell records and they are very powerful. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, being with a younger and, you know, pretty hungry label and uh, you're a priority and they will make everything they can to sell your record because they want their money back, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I, um, I like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're not playing second fiddle to, to anybody right now. And, uh, you know, for the last album... Great, you know. The Napalm love the album. We love the album, and uh, you know, it seems like uh, um, the press loves the album, you know, too right now. So um, it's all, it's only the fans left, you know, that <laughs> that have they have to have their say about it. But uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and what are your upcoming tour plans, if any? And how do you hope that? Uh, candle mass goes out with a bang. Um, hopefully, we can. Um, we are um, planning a tour uh, for the autumn right now. Uh, we hopefully with Angel Witch. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I heard anyway. I think that's a pretty good combination. Candle mass and Angel Witch, and perhaps a third band on on the bill. I think that would be wonderful, uh, personally. So I would love. Love to make that happen. And I'm sure there's going to be another tour coming up for the autumn mm -hmm. as well. Even though our guitar player will have, uh, um, will have a child mm -hmm. uh, sometime in the autumn. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that you know we can you know sort things out you know, with the schedule and everything. So he can have this baby, and uh, we can still you know play live with Canamas and. Uh, you know, so, and hopefully, you know, we will have, still have the respect from fans and press and media mm -hmm. and everybody, you know, with, with Sound for the Dead being our last album. And people say, hey, you know, they, they, they will always been a great band. Uh, they ne never delivered, you know, shitty albums and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, um, I don't know, final words. Um, I can't think of any, but... Uh, you know, I think anyway that uh, it's a pretty good way to say goodbye anyway, this album. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck. And to me, I think a good idea would be for you guys, since this is, you know, your final roundup, you should try doing a tour with just yourselves and just, like, do a two- to three-hour set if you could handle it. That would be an interesting thing. You could throw, you know, your whole collection right there on stage and it just be you guys. I've seen other bands yeah. do that before. 
It would be interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, sure the fans would suck it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Truth be to do that all the time in every show they do. <laughs> Three hours and Rush do it as well. Uh, but we, we actually, um, uh, last year we uh, we had the uh, 25th anniversary of, of uh, Epicus, Doomicus, Metallicus. <coughs> and uh, um, we played for two and a half hours. <laughs> we did the, the entire Epicus, Doomicus, Metallicus uh, for a few shows. Mm -hmm. And then we did, you know, a proper camera set on top of that. So we played for two and a half hours. And uh, fucking hell, you know, you're not 30 anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, your back hurts, your knees hurt, you know, your feet hurt, but uh, it was, you know, a blast to do that. And, uh, you know, um, um, that would be so cool to, we've been talking about, you know, having the fans to vote for a set, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the fans' personal, you know, favorite set list. Mm -hmm. And if that would be, you know, two hours or two and a half hours, uh, that would be fantastic. So I'm pretty sure we're going to do that sometime and let the fans vote for, you know, what kind of massage they want to hear. Yeah. Um, that would be a cool. It won't work with every show, you know, you do yeah. on a tour. It will not work. But <laughs> as a general you know, thought, in a way, I think it's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> well, let's see if we play, you know, uh, Los Angeles or Whiskey A Go Go again. You know, that gig was a blast, actually. It was, uh, you know, uh, you know, a good crowd, and uh, we had three wonderful days in in Los Angeles. So, um, you know, I um, I really want to come back. Yeah. You know, and hopefully we will play Vegas as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta wait and see what happens. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, thanks a lot, Natalie. It was a pleasure talking to you. Same here, and hopefully I get to meet you guys in person if you ever come back to California. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, watch for us in the bar at Whiskey A Go Go. I'm pretty sure we will be there if we play the gig. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I look forward to it. Nice talking to you. Okay. Thanks a lot, Natalie. Thanks a lot for the interview. You're Thank welcome. you. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. 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 Oh, just a little bit rough. <laughs> it's all right. All the all this all this pollen, you know. So I'm allergic <laughs> to spring. <laughs> well, good thing the summer is coming up. Maybe it'll push your allergies away. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope so because because in Sweden uh, <coughs> we get the summer really late and uh, uh, it's been really cold, so spring is delayed. Mm -hmm. So now uh, when it gets a little bit warmer. Uh, all the pollen, everything that blooms at the same time, you know, extremely fast. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like, uh, you know, having, you know, six months of winter and then you have two weeks of spring and then there's summer for three months. So mm -hmm. it's really weird, you know, when you have such a cold spring as, as it's been right now this year. <laughs> it's pretty weird. Yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> Yeah, uh, is this New York or Los Angeles? Los Angeles, California. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. You're not, so you're not so used to winter and spring and seasons and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> yeah, okay, I envy you, I envy you. 